Hi everyone, it's Michael, and it's time for the March 2022 Orchid Collection update. I'm gonna keep this intro super brief because there is so much to show you. The plants are doing exceptionally well. There are so many stunning things in bloom, and that is largely in response to the transition of my plants from semi-hydroponics to classic bark medium. Now, I don't wanna be overly reductive. Of course, there are other contributing factors, and correlation does not show causation. So I can't say definitively that because they've been transitioned to classic grow medium that they're doing better. But I definitely think that it is noteworthy that post-transition, the plants are thriving so conspicuously. Um, so just to quickly recap what I'm doing this month, I'm continuing to flush all of the orchid containers once to twice a month. Between those flushes, I am watering with a dilute nutrient solution composed of Dynagro and CalMag. I am sustaining a strong source of moving air, which is the overhead fan. I have a humidifier sustaining anywhere between 35 to 40% ambient humidity, and I am misting the plants every morning where possible. Honestly, it's maybe more every other morning, but they do just fine. So having said all of that, let's jump in and take a look at the plants that have something new, different, and interesting happening this month. All right, my friends, jumping in with number three in the collection, we have my Wilsonara Aloha Sparks. And just look at these stunning, proud flower spikes it's giving me. Double flower spikes off one pseudobulb. And I've mentioned this before, but this is the first time in five years of having this plant that it has ever provided me a double flower spike. So I think that this has been exceptionally successful in its transition to classic bark medium. Actually, if I take you into the root system, I'm gonna be careful because I don't wanna snap any of these spikes, is you can see the root system has really, really experienced accelerated growth. It became quite established quite quickly. Um, but the challenge that I'm having with it is really the pseudobulbs. You can see that they prune up very quickly, they desiccate quickly, um, and this one just requires a little bit more attentiveness in this grow method regarding how often it gets watered. So, so long as I can sustain, you know, awareness of its needs, I think that this plant is going to do so, so well. Now jumping to number eight in the collection, this is my Banfield Ara Mystic Maze, and wouldn't you know it, we have a stunning little flower spike on the way, and I think it's quite close to blooming. Uh, this is so exciting for me because this plant really struggled. It lost a lot of its old growths, it lost a lot of its old leaves, um, but as soon as I transitioned it, you can almost see it's becoming somewhat unmanageable within the container. It made contact with that bark medium and just hit a stride so quickly, and that's a very common narrative for a lot of my plants, but particularly the Oncidium types. So I just wanted to showcase how well this one is doing. Looking forward to seeing it in bloom very soon. Now jumping to number nine in the collection, this is the keiki that I took from my mom's collection years ago. Now for having this in my collection for years, you can see that the plant still appears to be quite juvenile. You can see that there's still a fair amount of dieback on the lower leaves. Now the peculiar thing about semi-hydroponics, or at least my practice of semi-hydroponics was that the plants never outright struggled so much that I felt that they had a super compelling reason to be repot. And I left them there because they continued to bloom for me, they continue to flower. Um, but I do think that it's time once this flower spike, you know, concludes to clip off the flower spike and repot it into bark medium. Now I did use number 51 in my collection kind of as a barometer for how this might go. And I'm gonna show you that later in this video. But I do think you know, my original game plan was to leave my Phalaenopsis types alone and keep them in semi-hydroponics, but I think that I'm gonna transition even those to classic bark medium. Um, so even though this is stunning and very beautiful, I think it can give me a much more robust display and the plant can reach, you know, greater maturity in a different method. Now jumping to number 11 in the collection, I swear I get emotional every single time I show this plant because it has just been so unexpectedly and consistently successful for me. This is of course my Psychopsis Mendenhall Hildos. It is absolutely stunning and just get a load of this bloom. This is the very first bud off of the new flower spike it produced. So there are now four sequential spikes in total. I am so excited about this. It is so big and so powerful and exquisite. Now, the interesting thing about this one, I was so nervous to transition this from semi-hydroponics because it has been successful and it has been vigorous and I thought that it really might slow. And to some extent it did, you know, the sequential spikes that we have that were already existing, they kind of slowed down. They're much quicker to produce buds, um, obviously when they're not being disturbed by repots, but they all have kind of slowed down, but now they're beginning to regain momentum. But it did produce this fourth spike after being transitioned. But perhaps even more impressively, look at the root system. It has just really 
really hit a stride in terms of its development and growth. It is getting very well established in the container. And that happened in a process that was much more accelerated than I anticipated. So I'm just so excited to see that this one is not just surviving, but it really is thriving in this revised grow methodology. Such a treat. Now on to number 16 in the collection. This is my Dapper Dots Nicolasa Tavares Catacetum. Uh, this one is doing kind of peculiar. I, I think it's doing well. This is the first time it's being grown in a non-semi-hydroponic grow setup or non-glass uh, container setup. So this one has been potted into just strict sphagnum moss into uh, a slatted container just like so. I waited until the roots were about three inches long to begin watering so I just started watering it. So you can see that the, the growth is a little bit mangled and a little bit weird at the moment, but it tends to self-resolve uh, once it hits more of a stride. But the thing that is concerning me is you can see this abundance of keikis, and that is a new phenomenon with this plant. So I, you can see I've ripped one off already and just kind of set it on top of the moss. There's no energy system to support the growth of this plant, so I know it's going to dry up. But I'm just kind of watching it to see what's happening. Um, I do think that I'm probably going to remove the other ones that have developed, but I am concerned about the fact that it's producing so many because that's a relatively new development. Now, I am so excited to share this one with everyone because I was actually about to speak to the fact that I think that my Paphio Pedlums have not been quite as successful in this transition as my other plants. But this one, number 21 in the collection, which is my Paphio Pedlum Pinocchio Laoi Hybrid, is making me reconsider that. It's been slower to accept the new grow method, but I went into the root system earlier and recognized, look at all of this exceptional new root growth. Do you see this? Look at that. It took much longer than my Oncidiums or my Cat Leas to respond to the update, but it is producing such a gigantic flush of roots and really, really getting acclimated in the container. Now, nothing has died off. Nothing has gone wrong with this plant. It just really wasn't doing anything, so I thought it was going to slowly die off, and it just looks so much more robust, so much more turgid and hydrated, and I think that can only improve as this root system expands. Again, this has been so slow to produce roots in the time it's been in my collection, so to see it do it as quickly as it has over the past few months is, uh, at least given the environment I've provided, a huge, huge step forward. So very excited to see how this progresses. Now moving to number 25 in the collection, we have my Epidendrum Green Hornet, a very reliable sequential bloomer, and wouldn't you know it, shortly after being repotted, it is producing its flower spike. It's gone ahead and pushed through that new sheath. I'm super excited to see this one in bloom again. It hasn't been very long since it last bloomed. But another success story when you look at the root system, it just produced a brand new root system super quickly, so much so that it's peeking out of the bottom of the container. Uh, so I think that I can expect a lot of good things from this one, but I do find that this is another one that I have to be super attentive with regarding its moisture levels. It does not like to dry out. It suffers quickly uh, when I forget. And uh, I do need to be more aware, uh, just across the board with all of the plants in this revised grow setup, it needs, they require a little bit more supervision than they did in semi-hydroponics. Now moving on to an absolute icon, number 28 in the collection. This is of course my Cattleya Purple Blue Hawaii. And just look how stunning this bloom is. I say this all the time, I wish smell vision existed because the scent that radiates off of this bloom is absolutely breathtaking, so soft, so floral. Um, but this is another success story. Uh, it got repotted into classic bark medium and it just very quickly began to establish a new root system. You can see the root system has also grown out of the bottom of the container. Uh, all of these pruned up pseudobulbs and growths are really starting to reinflate, which is such a positive sign. And the fact that it produced a bloom so quickly after being repotted is another positive indicator. So I'm just so happy to see this one doing so well. I feel like the leaves themselves are even more green and vivid than I've seen them in a few years. So all really, really positive. Now moving on to a plant that gets very little screen time in my collection. This is number 29, my Eulafia petersi. It's a desert orchid, and this plant just has not been doing amazingly for the entirety of its time in my collection, but I did get it repotted into direct succulent mix, and I put it into a slatted container, which affords it a great deal more drainage. Um, and aeration. And what's surprising me is it's produced a new growth very, very quickly at a much more accelerated rate than I'm accustomed to seeing. And this plant has been so, so slow to produce new roots. And I just realized there's that beautiful new green root tip in the container. So this is doing better than I've seen it. I still don't know that my grow environment is the optimal conditions for this plant, but um, maybe I'll just withhold judgment and see how things go. It's, it's doing better than I've seen it do. 
Now moving on to number 36 in the collection. This is my Fred Clark Yara After Dark SVL Black Pearl. You can see this is a big plan. It has big potential and it has just produced its new growth right at the base. If I take you in closer, you can see I have been waiting for that growth to peek its head out and for it to have Again, about three inches of root growth to begin watering. So right now I'm in the process of just giving it a light mist. Um, I'm just kind of lightly wetting the top layer of sphagnum moss. And when it has sufficient enough root growth, then I will resume watering, but it's not quite there yet. But very, very exciting to see it coming out of dormancy. Now on to number 51 in the collection. These are of course my wedding day Phalaenopsis orchids. So this plant, this plant, and the one up there on that shelf, they are all the same plant. These are classic white Phalaenopsis. They were all present for my wedding day. And as I mentioned before, as I was discussing number nine, I had originally intended to leave my Phalaenopsis types in semi-hydroponics because as long as I've had them in that grow method, they've bloomed consistently. They didn't appear to struggle. Um, but I decided I wanted to try a bit of an experiment. So I took one of the plants, I clipped off the flower spike, and I repotted it into classic medium. Now I wanna do a compare and contrast. Bear in mind, correlation does not show causation, so there could be other issues at play here, but I think that my conclusion is pretty evident. Look at the leaves. The leaves here are so floppy and so, uh, they seem just a little bit dehydrated, always just a little bit dehydrated. And you can see there's some dieback at the bottom leaf, which is normal, but this time around, the dieback is happening from the center of the plant, not withdrawing energy from the tip of the leaf, which tells me that there's a larger issue here. Now, the one that I did not have uh, in semi-hydroponics and got repotted into bark medium, look at these leaves. So firm, so fleshy, so turgid. Uh, this one really, really acclimated to the grow method super quickly. And I don't know if you can see, it's producing a beautiful new leaf as well. So it, it just seems to be responding so differently than the other plants. So I do think that ultimately when those flower spikes are done, I am going to repot them into classic bark medium as well because I mean, it, it's just night and day between this plant and how its vegetative growth is performing versus this one. Now on to number 60, we are looking at my Ballara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. And this is another one that is just accepting the transition to classic medium so quickly. Look at it throwing down this flush of new roots. It is super happy, it is super vigorous, and it has a beautiful little flower spike on the way. Now the interesting thing is, I believe that the flower spike was actually uh, initiated pre-transition to uh, classic medium. I think that I just didn't notice it. And you can see that there's this very peculiar little fold in the flower spike uh, because it, it, this plant has classically been very, very dehydrated. It dries out super, super easily. So this is another one that I have to watch its hydration levels. But even with my inattentiveness, it's doing much better. The pseudobulbs are all super plump and happy. And I think I can expect a lot of happy blooms from this one very soon. Now moving on to number 65 in the collection. This is my Sergio Ara Yokosuka Story. This is another one of the plants that doesn't get too much airtime because it's typically not doing much of anything, but look at these stunning blooms it has produced. It is absolutely exquisite. This canary yellow paired with the fuchsia center and then the petals and this absolutely gorgeous green. I just could not love this plant anymore. Now this one is actually one of the few remaining plants that I have in semi-hydro and it's done relatively well. But the challenge is I have always been trying to combat this purpling of the leaves. Um, and I think that, you know, someone's gonna yell at me for this, but I do think that the plant is just kind of suffocating. I think that, you know, I have played with its nutrient levels. I have played with its moisture levels. I have played with humidity. I have played with so many other uh, potential contributors to this color or discoloration and really to no avail. I think that there's a strong possibility that converting this to classic bark medium and having greater ventilation might ameliorate the challenge that I've had with this plant for the years that I've had it. So as I say all the time, just because a plant blooms does not mean it's in good health. I am so appreciative for the stunning beauty of these blooms, and I hope that I can have a future with a lot more of them with a much healthier plant soon. And with that, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much as always for choosing to spend your time with me. If you have any questions, concerns, or feedback, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Be sure to support one another in the comment section because I'm so seldom available to do so. Don't forget to click subscribe and have a beautiful rest of your day. Mwah! Bye friends.